Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a two-tone hexagon pattern in Photoshop. And for this I have to thank one of my Facebook followers who asked me for this video and this is the result. So thank you for following me on Facebook and here is how to create this effect. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to do. In this video, we're going to look at creating a honeycomb pattern like this that is a dual color honeycomb where one part of the hexagon is colored one way and the other part another way. So let's get started with this tutorial. We're going to start by choosing File and then New and I'm going to make a new pattern swatch on a document that's 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels in size and transparent background. Now I'm going to make sure that I have layer edges and smart guides, everything turned on here under view show. So I'm going to want to see layer edges, I want to see smart guides and I want to see guides if that were available. Now let's choose new guides and I'm going to add horizontal and vertical guides at 50%. So this is a vertical 50% and now let's do a horizontal 50%. And we're going to drag out a hexagon. So from the collection here, I'm going to choose polygon. Make sure it has six sides and from this drop down list, I'm going to make sure that star is not selected because we just want a regular polygon. I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to add the Alt key and also the Shift key and I'm going to rotate this until the point of this hexagon is at the very top here. So you can see that it is a point at the top rather than a flat edge. And as soon as I've got that, I'm going to let go of the left mouse button and then let go of the Alt and the Shift keys. Now this time let's create our pattern piece in a sort of green color. So I'm going to go and get a sort of green color to use. I'm going to click on lock to lock the pixels on this layer and then Alt Backspace to fill the shape with the currently selected foreground color. Now I want to center this shape so I'm just going to add a new layer below the shape. I'm going to control click on the layer thumbnail here and I'm going to choose Select All. And when I do, I get these marching ants all the way around the entire shape. So now I'll choose Layer, Align Layers to Selection, Vertical Centers, and then Layer, Align Layers to Selection, Horizontal Centers. And that just makes the shape centered over the top of this document, so it's dead center. I'm going to press Control or Command D to deselect the selection. I'm going back to select this shape. And now before I continue, I want to make this a smart object. So I'm just going to right click on this layer and convert it to a smart object. This will allow me to scale this object without losing the nice smooth edges that it's got because this is a really big pattern piece. It's like 2000 pixels nearly in size. So by converting it to a smart object, I'm going to get a lot of flexibility with working with it. Now at this point I'm going to double click on the smart object so that I can actually recolor half of this. So I'm just going to size this down and drag out a rectangular marquee over half of this shape. I'm going to lock the pixels on this layer so making sure that they're locked and I'm going to go and select a different green so let's go for a lighter blue-green here. Alt Backspace Option Delete to fill it with that color. I can now unlock these pixels and close this document. So I'm just going to close this layer PSV file and click Yes to save it. And what's happening is that that's being saved as a smart object inside this other document. So now I can size this down. So I'm just going to drag to resize it, adding the Alt and Shift keys so that it's scaled in proportion. And let's just go and double check to make sure that this really is centered. So I'm going to control click on this layer thumbnail and then choose Select All and double check Layer Align Layers to Selection Vertical Center, Layer Align Layers to Selection Horizontal Center so it is perfectly centered. 
Now we need to make multiple copies of this. So with the selection tool selected, I'm going to Alt or Option, drag a copy of this shape away from the original. Now it looks like I had everything selected, so let's just deselect everything and just double check that these are snapping into position. I should be seeing all these guides visible, which is telling me that they're snapping right alongside each other. And then Alt Option and drag this one back again, again just making sure that everything is snapping together really, really nicely. If you think that these are not perfectly aligned, then just click on each of these with the Shift key selected and then click on Align Vertical Centers here so that you make sure that they're aligned vertically. So this is the middle row. Now let's go and create the next row. We need to fill in these other four shapes. So again, Alt or Option, drag. Just going to drag and drop this into position here. And then Alt or Option drag to drag this one into position. I'm just going to zoom in to check to make sure that these are nicely aligned, which it appears they are. Don't want to be seeing any gaps here, if at all possible, because Photoshop creates anti-aliased shapes and it is a real pain to try and get these lined up. And if they don't line up perfectly, then you're pattern is going to be off by just like a pixel later on and it can be really, really annoying. Okay, now that I've got these shapes in place, again with the selection tool, Alt or Option drag to create an additional copy of this shape. Again, placing it into position, just making sure that it's perfectly in position and then Alt or Option drag to create the last shape and that should just snap into position. Now, if we've got that all perfectly aligned, things should start to work very easily from now. I'm going to drag inwards on the ruler to create a grid line here or guideline here. If you don't see your rulers, choose View and then Rulers because you want to see your rulers and you also want to see guides if they're not visible. Of course, you want to be seeing your guides. So I want one down this line here and I want one down over there so I'm just going to drag out and make sure my guide is snapping into place there. And then I want one aligned to the middle of these two shapes. So the first thing to do is to go and find one of these shapes. This is one of them. Let's just zoom in there. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, move across, make sure that I have this shape selected with the selection tool, make sure that it's selected so I can see this center point and then just drag down on this ruler till I get a guide that snaps into position. Now I'm going to Alt, well, I've got my zoom tool on here, I'm just going to Alt Zoom to zoom out. And I need to do the same down here so I'm going to have to pick up one of these two shapes and I think this is the one I want, yes. So I want to be able to see this middle marker very clearly, so I'm going to zoom in. Make sure again that I have the Select tool selected and this shape here selected so I can see the middle marker. Then just drag down to drop that guide into place. Now the reason why we're taking trouble to create guides is because we've got Snap to Guides turn on, View, Snap to Guides is turned on. This means that I can use the Rectangular Marquee tool now to grab my pattern piece because I need to drag from this point here all the way down to this point here. And without having that Snap to Guides turned on, it would be really hard to get this perfectly aligned. Once I've got that, I'll choose Edit, Define Pattern. I'm going to call this Hexagon. And once I've defined that as a pattern, we can go and test to see that it's working OK. I'm going to create a slightly larger document, 3000 by 3000 pixels in size. I'll choose Layer, New Fill Layer, and then Pattern. And I'm going to click OK at this dialog. Now the pattern piece we're seeing being used is the last one in the Patterns panel, which is the one that we've just created. 
Now we can test this by shrinking it down to see how it looks and then increasing its size. Now at the increase point, we're going to see if there are any problems with our underlying pattern piece. And I'm seeing an issue here. It seems like one of the side pieces is not perfectly aligned. So let's just cancel out of here and let's go back to our pattern and see if we can pick up what's happening here. Now I've got a empty layer at the bottom of the document and white is my background color. So I'm just going to click in that empty layer and control backspace or command delete on the Mac to just fill it with white because it might be a little bit easier for me to see what's going on here. And from where I'm sitting right now, I'm thinking the problem's up here and it is. You can see that the grid line here is running just outside the edge of these pattern pieces. So it's just one bit over. So I'm going to go and get my select tool here and I'm just going to bring my guide back in and just double check to make sure it's in position. So I think this might resolve the situation. Let's just get the zoom tool and zoom back out again. Again, we're going to need to turn the background off right now because we don't want that visible. But now let's go and just making sure that snap is turned on here. Yes, it is. So that's going to work fine. And just click and drag over here to select this as our pattern piece. So again, edit, define pattern. I'm going to call this hexagon two because this is my second attempt at it. Let's go back into this document we created. Let's try that again. Layer, new fill layer pattern. Click OK. The pattern that we're seeing now is hexagon two. So we can just check to see how it's looking. Well, this time I'm not seeing any spacing issues with this pattern. Everything looks really good here and we're on a really, really large scale. Our original pattern pieces were nearly 2000 pixels in size and we're scaled it up at 600%. So if it's looking okay here, it's going to be just fine at a smaller size. So just adding it in at say 60% scale and click OK. So there's our finished pattern here in Photoshop. We've been able to create that from a basic hexagon shape and you may need to do as I have done and to create this pattern a couple of times just in case the first time it doesn't work. So if you don't get it right, don't hesitate to go back and have another shot at realigning everything and just making sure that you get the pieces correct. And of course, once you've got this pattern created, it is going to stay in Photoshop unless you reset your preferences or reinstall Photoshop. If you want to save this permanently, let's go to Edit and then we're going to Presets and Preset Manager. So I'm going into my Patterns Presets. Now I've got this one that wasn't correct, so I'm just going to delete that because we don't want that in the way because that's going to cause problems. This is the one that we just created and we can just save it. So we can just call that Hexagon. And it's saved as a PAT file, so we'll always be able to get it back even if we reinstall Photoshop. So I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.